there is one body part that is always weak and underdeveloped in hockey players, it's the back. A few weeks ago, I published a video on why hockey players must train their upper back. If you haven't seen it yet, click the link somewhere up here to get the full scoop. That brings us to today's topic, which is the top 11 jack back builders for hockey athletes. Before I reveal which exercises you should perform and in which rep ranges to get the most out of them, a short primer on back anatomy. We are athletes, not bodybuilders, so no need to overthink this. Roughly speaking, we can divide back training into three categories. One, exercises that target the upper traps, so beefing up your back up top. Two, exercises that mainly hit the mid upper back, meaning back thickness. When you stand sideways, if your shadow disappears, you got a problem. And three, exercises that primarily stress the lats, adding width to your back. A wide muscular back coupled with the slim waist gives you that irresistible and powerful movie star look. Most back movements train more than one muscle group. Let's take the seated cable row for example. Depending on your grip, the handle you use, how high you pull the handle, the angle of the pull, and so on, you can make this exercise more lat dominant or more mid upper back dominant. So there's overlap between the categories. It's not like this exercise only works this one muscle. Just keep that in mind going forward. With the intro out of the way, let's jump right into our list of the top 11 back exercises. We'll kick off with power shrugs. You rarely see shrugs in a hockey training program. It's not a super important exercise. And most athletes are too upper trap dominant anyway, so doing lots of shrugs while neglecting other areas can lead to issues such as poor posture or neck pain. But from an injury prevention perspective, specifically when it comes to concussions, you'll want to have some mass in your traps and neck. To build bigger upper traps, power shrugs are great and for a thicker neck, you gotta do direct neck work in order to build that yoke to protect your head during collisions. Here, 6 to 12 reps works fine. Strong dudes can drop it down to 3 to 5 reps occasionally. Once you're moving 5 plates or more, even if it's just for low reps, your traps will stand out. Number 10, I don't know the official name of this. I call it the high rope nipple row because you're using a rope attachment and rowing to your nipple from a high stack position. Whatever you want to call it, the rhomboids will get lit up here. The only issue is that you can't really do these for sets of 12 or less because you'll use so much weight that the weight stack will pull you out of position. So this exercise forces you to go lighter by default, which isn't a bad thing, it just means you gotta bump up the reps. 15 on the low end, 25 to 35 on the high end for a huge burn. Next we have the inverted row, also known as the fat man pull up. Great for stressing the muscles around your shoulder blades. I prefer the rings here because they allow your shoulders to rotate naturally instead of jamming them into place, which is what you get with a straight bar. Straight arms at the bottom and your thumbs should graze your chest in the contracted position. Weak guys will start with your body approximately at a 45 degree angle. If you have to go even higher, then so be it. As you get stronger, you get closer and closer to the floor. Eventually, your body will remain a hair above the floor at the bottom after which point you can raise your feet on a box or add a weight vest to make this movement harder. As for the target number of reps, we usually do 8 to 12 up to 15. The eighth place goes to landmine rows. V-handle landmine rows are a classic back movement. Lean forward and drive your elbows toward your back pockets. Don't shrug the weight up, a mistake a lot of people make. Use smaller diameter plates to increase range of motion. A regular 45 pound plate will restrict your ROM too much, so stacking a bunch of smaller 25 pound plates will give you better pumps. Here, 8 to 15 reps gets the job done. Number 7, rack pull-ups. I never see these done in an off-ice program because people don't know about this exercise, which is a shame because it's an effective lat builder. Focus on getting a nice lat stretch at the bottom then pull up from there. If you're doing bodyweight reps, I prefer to just bang out as many as possible with good form. No kipping and chin clears the bar. Often that means 15 to 20 reps or even more if you're strong, 8 to 12 reps when you're using external loads. Then we have the face pull. With these, besides regular reps, I like pauses in the contracted position. Anywhere from 1 to 6 seconds works great. Obviously the length of your pause will determine how many reps you do since the goal here is not to go super heavy, 
but to make the muscles around your shoulder blades burn bad, we want a long time under tension. Regular reps, quite a wide range, 12 to 25, a 3 second pause, 10 to 15, 6 second contraction, 8 to 10 reps. Those are good guidelines to follow. Coming in at number 5, the Smith Machine Row. This piece of equipment gets a ton of flack, rightfully so, because the Smith Machine is not optimal for beginners who need to learn how to properly stabilize their body under load. So barbell bench presses and squats are much better options. But for someone who knows what they're doing, the Smith Machine is actually not a bad choice. With a bent over barbell row, if you're doing a lot of skating, squatting and deadlifting, your lower back will be tired and this will limit how much weight you can row. Since the bar path is fixed, the Smith Machine requires less stability and less contribution from the spinal erectors to hold you in position. So you can use more resistance. I get great mid upper back pumps here and I like the fact I can add some damn weight. You got a lot of variety with this one, 6 to 8 reps on the low end and up to 15 20 on the high end. Solid exercise. The fourth place goes to seated cable rows, another movement we have all done before. I prefer a double handle or B handle because I get a stronger contraction that way. I never seem to get that same feel with a wider grip. Your mileage may vary, so you gotta test all those handles out to find the best for you. Typical bodybuilding rep ranges apply here, 8 to 10, 12 to 15, all good. Third spot, the chest supported row. So underrated yet so effective. Since your chest is supported by a bench, you can't cheat too much. That means you gotta focus on controlled movement and really making the right muscles work. You can't go wrong with 10 to 20 reps. Once in a while I go higher, 25, even 35 reps, something I got from the late bodybuilder John Meadows. I credit those burn sets on this exercise for my mid-back thickness. Next up, a tremendous lat builder, the single arm dumbbell row. A ton of people do these wrong, they're just heaving the weight up and down, their biceps and forearms take over when you should be feeling your lats stretch and contract. 6 to 6 to 10, 8 to 12 reps most of the time. With strong guys, I like to go heavy and for high reps. This combo was made popular by powerlifter Matt Krasilevsky, sorry if I butchered that name. Grab a big weight, strap up and let her rip. A good goal to shoot for is 20 plus reps with the biggest dumbbell at your gym, 110 to 130 pounds. If you can do that without excessive cheating, your back will look thick and wide. Finally, the winner, weighted chin-ups. I always point to climbers as proof of what pulling your body up over and over can do for your back development. These guys have ripped backs despite weighing 135, 140 pounds and it's all from climbing and doing weighted chins in the gym. This is the only exercise on this list I treat as a true max strength list. 1 to 5 reps builds tremendous pulling strength while sets of 6 to 10 fit in as accessory work. That's a wrap, top 11 back exercises for hockey players, add these into your routine and watch your back grow. Speaking of making sick gains. Check out this video about the number one deadlift boosting exercise and this video right here where I walk you through a full NHL strength workout so you can train like the pros. Thank you for watching. If you want more great training tips like this then hit that like button, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video.